because that's what she is. <laughs> to us, she is. So anyway, here you go. Give her a can, girls. Yeah. Well, she's done a lot of studying. She's got. She's she's going to give us quite a detailed uh, message today. Not only that, but she's doing part one today, and then the following women's ministry will be part two. Oh, yeah, so we're taking notes. <laughs> um, right. Um, so, Mary, what did she do, for goodness sake? She didn't lead an army or help lead an army like Deborah. She didn't save her nation by knocking off the general for the, from the opposing side. She didn't do... What did she do? Well, she had a baby. Okay, can you say out? Uh -huh. You want the picture? This is a very short clip. Okay. Let, let me. Oh, the the picture or? Not the picture. The clip. The video. The video. Okay. <laughs> One second. Because uh, I'm gonna. Lost it. <laughs> is it that one? That one? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanna want them to see online too. One second. It was, it was here before. <laughs> That's the one, right? I the singing? Think. The singing one, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, um, I'm trying to get it to, if not, they cannot see it either. Okay. I, why did I pick that? Because it's part of my family worshipping. Worshipping the Lamb who was slain from before the foundation of the world, the one who we were singing about just a few minutes ago. Worshipping him who is from everlasting to everlasting. They're worshipping Mary's baby. Which is, <laughs> yes. Go ahead. So, the beginning of our part of this story from everlasting to everlasting about the Lamb who was slain is that which is mentioned in John chapter 1 when he says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the glory of the only begotten full of, of the Father, full of grace and truth. And Mary had a part in this. And it goes like this, round about just over 2,000 years ago in a small village in North Israel, in Galilee of the Gentiles, there was a very young woman. Now, I discovered when researching this that in those days, you could be married as a girl from the age of 12, day, 12 years and one day. At that point, you could make the covenant with the man who was, had been chosen to be your husband. You didn't get to, as you know, as Hannah told us last month, you didn't get to live together. He would go off back to wherever he came from. In this case, somewhere in the same village. And he would prepare a place for you. So once, now she's married, but she's not stepped with Joseph. She's waiting for him. It's going to take at least a year. So she's probably 13, maybe 14, depending on exactly when they made the covenant. But she's very, very young. We wouldn't allow this to happen today. But God chose a very young woman. I think she was braver than any of us would have been. Um, 
So this very young woman uh, was in the middle, round about, come on, <laughs> halfway between, probably about halfway between when they'd made the covenant and when her husband would come back to collect her. And uh, all of a sudden, now you can share the next picture. <laughs> if you it. I have it. Um, this happened in the sixth month. Now, this is the sixth month, not of the year, but of Elizabeth, the wife of Zachariah's um, pregnancy. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin who was engaged, married to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in and said to her, Hail, you full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw that, she was troubled. That's why I picked that picture. I think she looks rather alarmed. Uh, usually, as I said to the ladies earlier, she just looks pious in pictures, but there she doesn't. She looks worried. And, and she saw, when she saw him, she was troubled and cast in her mind, what's this about? And the angel said to her, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God, and you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and will call his name Yeshua, Jesus and he will be great and be called the son of the most high and the Lord God shall give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his, of his kingdom there will be no end from everlasting to everlasting. And then he said, uh, how can this be? I haven't slept with my husband yet. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the highest will come and overshadow you. And that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Be it done to me according to your will. Would it? I once met a person who said, Oh, anybody could have done that. I don't think I could have done it. Because <laughs> What was look what we're looking at, what she's looking at in that yes is the possibility of being stoned to death, the possibility of being thrown out of her family, the possibility of ending up in this, on the street because nobody will have anything to do with her because who's going to believe a story like that anyway? <laughs> you know? So the angel goes on to say, and your co your cousin now, cousin is not a Hebrew word. There's no such word. So she's just a relative of some sort. Elizabeth is who you know couldn't have a baby. She's in her six months now. <laughs> well, I think I better go and see Elizabeth. Not particularly to be to help her, but she can help me. She can understand. So off Mary goes. And it would be walking, it wouldn't get in a car and get there in a few hours. It'd be quite a while. So she got to where Elizabeth was, and Elizabeth, she walks in, and Elizabeth says, Oh, she almost pretty repeats the angel's salutation. Why, how, what is it that the Lord, mother of my Lord, has come to me? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Mary stays with her after that confirmation for about three months. Now, Mary's yes, interestingly, cancelled out what was the start of the process of rededicating this earth, which had been desecrated by somebody else's yes, you know who, Eve. When she said yes, not to God, but to the other guy. <laughs> I mentioned his name. <laughs> um, so now Mary has said yes, that cancels Eve's yes. But there's also a confirmation yes, we're going to need because Adam is standing right there. That's coming. Um, 
that's my friend. <laughs> um, so the uh, round about now, at this point, around the middle, between when Mary has conceived and Mary, the baby will be born. Round about the Jewish feast of Hanukkah, which you know falls at the same time as our, when we celebrate Christmas, which is the feast of the red rededication of the whole world through Mary and the rekindling of the light that went out when Eve said yes to the wrong person. Now, Jesus wasn't born yet, but as it happens, if we just celebrate it when he actually was born, it would clash with Passover. We would be trying to celebrate them both at once. So it's organized that in the middle here, God has put this feast that has to be, has been fulfilled by the coming birth. Okay, so Mary, after three or four months, three months and a bit, goes home and her family say, and what have you been doing? And what are we going to say to Joseph? And Joseph's friends are saying, you know, did you see Mary since she got back? You know, she's, she's been up to something. <laughs> and the parents, I presume, go and see Joseph and they say, you know, you wouldn't believe the story, but please, please don't let her be stoned. Do something else. And Joseph said, okay. I will just divorce her quietly. You can send her back to Elizabeth, get her out of the way, something. But in that night, here comes Gabriel again. And he says to Joseph, don't be afraid to marry Mary. Take her as your wife, because that which is conceived in her has been, is of the Holy Spirit. And he is going to be called the Son of God. And Joseph says, yes. And in his yes, confirming what Mary has said, he cancels the other half of the yes that Adam had not said aloud, but in allowing Eve to get away with it when he was standing right there. He obviously was, because she gave him some too, and he ate it. Um, so that is cancelled, and it is cancelled. But it's still got, it's a process. It's not a chopped or finished thing. Where are we now? Uh, right. So Joseph has said yes, taken Mary to live with him. And uh, there are a couple of little problems. Joseph, by one is that the Messiah, which is Yeshua, Jesus, has to be of the house and lineage of David. Well, his adopted father, and being adopted in those days was far more strong importance than that being the ordinary son. If your ordinary son misbehaves, you say, get out, you're not my son anymore. If you've adopted somebody, that can't be done. You've adopted him, and that is finished. Finished Clara, as they say in South Africa, which means he's finished. <laughs> um, and so now, because he's adopted by Joseph, he is also this baby that is coming of the house and lineage of David. On Mary's side, it's something different because Joseph and Elizabeth and Zechariah are both from the Levite and the Aaronic side, so there's a priestly line there. But that's not what is required, it's the house of David. Another little, that's fine. Another little problem is that he's not supposed to be born in Nazareth. He's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Hmm. But, you know, God's ahead of us, and he was ahead of all this, and he stirred up Octavian, who was also called Augustus, the Roman emperor, to have a look at his bank account. And he oh, this is as bad as the American bank account right now. <laughs> I'd better do something. I think I'll have to tax the entire em empire. Well, that you can understand. It makes sense. But the second part, 
And at the same time, I'm going to call a census and everybody's got to go back to their home village. I don't know why he thought that, except that God put it in his mind. So everybody was sent from notice of sent round the whole empire, all around the Mediterranean. Go to your village where your ancestors came from, go to your town and get sign in there and get taxed. So Mary and Joseph and the donkey set off for Bethlehem because that's where the house of David originated. That's where David was born. Now, the house of David, the line of David was pretty large because you think of all the wives David had, you think of all the wives and concubines that Solomon had, and they're all from the line of David. And then, of course, it's Rehoboam and he found any. So it's a big tribe. And everybody from that tribe is heading for Bethlehem. It's kind of Russia. Everybody on the donkey is arriving. And you can't order, uh, order in advance. Uh, what they called an inn in those days was more like an Airbnb. Um, there would be a house. They might have a guest room you could rent. But the house was also, I'm told, I'll have read, had the cow shed attached to it, slightly lower so that you wouldn't wake up in the, in the middle of the night with a cow breathing down your neck. They couldn't get in. But they was in the same house. So, okay, they've got there a bit late, it's taken them a while, you know, she's very sort of, oh, boy, this is, oh, this is heavy. And they arrive, and there's nobody used to go to spare guest room, and Uncle Sam's sleeping on the table in our room, and what are we going to do? <laughs> well, I tell you what, look, if you don't mind, do you mind sharing with the cows just down there in the other room? Well, there's nothing to do because she's now gone into labor and you can't go anywhere else. So we'll share with the cows the best we can do. And that's where Jesus was born and where he was born. The time he was born. Now, Hannah was going to share this because she shared it with me after last month's meeting. And I said, you must come and share that. But she's not well, so I hope I can remember. Um, the sacrificial lambs, and remember we said Jesus is the lamb who was slain, um, would be born in the lambing season, which is around March in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah. um, around March, April. And the, every, every firstborn male animal was holy to the Lord and had to be sacrificed, no arguments. Every firstborn human male Jewish was holy to the Lord, but he was not to be sacrificed. You had to buy him back. Except if you were the tribe of Levi, in which case you were holy to the Lord, end of story. You belonged to him. So, there's March, round about the time that we celebrate Passover and Easter nowadays, or Pass as it's called in other languages. And the shepherds are up and about all night because they're watching the young ewes to see when they start to give birth. And they have watchtowers, and in the watchtowers are hanging swaddling rams, which are apparently, so Hannah told me, and I believe her, um, made of the old worn-out robes of priests that have been torn into strips. So the, the lamb that is born, if it's a male lamb, a firstborn lamb, they would rush to the lamb. And it's got to be perfect first, it's got to be absolutely. And they would wrap it in the swaddling rags clothes to keep it pure and perfect. And Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes, just like that. I think I've remembered everything, Hannah. <laughs> She's online. Uh, and as we know, the, the Lord sent angels and sent those shepherds to come and worship before this 
baby. Okay, now, about eight days later, it's necessary that if you are, you should have your little boy circumcised, and seeing that they were right toast, Bethlehem him being right toast to Jerusalem, they were, Joseph and Mary were able to go to the temple for this, and also to pay the necessary couple of doves or two young pigeons to buy back so that they didn't, the baby didn't have to be sacrificed, which means he's going to have to be brought back by the priests later on so he could be sacrificed. And that was Judas's job. It's just amazing how it all fits in. So Mary and Joseph and the baby arrive in the temple and more confirmation, this old man Simeon has been waiting for the, the Messiah, for the Savior, and he's been promised that he will not die till he sees him. And he sees the baby come in, and he knows in his spirit, this is the one. Lord, let my, now you can let your servant depart in peace according to your will. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people, Israel. So Mary's thinking about this, sort of keeping these things in her head, and they go back. Now, you're with a tiny baby, you're not going to, especially when you've got to travel on the donkey and through the dust and no paved roads. So they settle down in Bethlehem and get a bit bigger. Joseph, all you needed was his carpenter's tools, which I could get a job and work in Bethlehem. And then the next thing that happens is up from the east come, we don't know how many wise men. And they had three sets of presents, but there might have been more of them, arrived looking for the king of the Jews. And they go to Jerusalem because they're sure that's where the king of the Jews is going to be found. And they go to Herod. Now, the interesting thing about this Herod, all of the Herods, because that's Herod's just the surname, is that they're not, not only not Jewish, but they are Adamian, which means Edomite, descendants of Esau. And so Herod has been, ha <laughs> ha, here am I, you know, there was a prophecy that the older will serve the younger, and I have fixed these Jews. I am making them serve me, and I am a descendant of Esau. I am the king of the Jews. And the wise men say, no, 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 you're not the right one, sorry. What about my son? No, he's too old too. Sorry, it was about a couple of years ago we saw this star. He can't be less than, more than two years old. Probably less. I am not going to be overtaken by some baby descendant of that Jacob. I tell you what, you go and find the baby and then come back and tell me and I'll come and worship him too. So all the other wise men and they find he's no longer in the manger, but he is still in the house, probably in the guest room by now. And they worship him and give gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, and myrrh for the death that he is going to die. Although I don't think they might realize what they're doing. And then an angel goes to them and says, no, don't go back to heaven. Go home a different way. He wants to kill the baby. So they listen and they go home another way. And Herod waits and he waits and he waits. And eventually, and they're not coming back, you know. I'm going to send the soldiers out to get rid of all the little boy babies under two years old in that time. That way I'll get him. I'll definitely get him. But God was there before him. Woke up Joseph in the middle of the night and said, take the young child and his mother and get out. Go. Because Herod's coming to kill him. So they skipped town in the middle of the night and went off to Egypt. Have we had a half an hour? <laughs>
<laughs> well, but then he went over to Egypt. And there they were for the next five or so years. Of course, as I said, Joseph could work. And wherever he went, beautiful child. But there we are. I think that's where I have to stop today. Okay, it's just one interesting point. Um, Eve, well, her name means life giver, but she brought this. Mary has two meanings, one in Hebrew, which is from Mara, which is, you know, is bitterness. Mariam, her name was. But when she got to Egypt, the meaning of the name there is love. So when we come back two weeks' time and go on with the story, we will hear the love coming out of Egypt. Thank you so much. That, that's a lot to take in. Yeah. You know it? Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Well, I didn't know it often before. <laughs> well, I know. That's what I love about this. When you start digging for nuggets, you find them. Yeah. So that's a lot of nuggets there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of nuggets. So we're looking forward to, in two weeks, we'll be able to find out what else God has laid on her heart to share with us. So uh, I just wanted to share a little something with you girls Um uh, I was praying, you know, asking God to help us. I want God to lead us with the women's ministry. I want the Holy Spirit to guide us. And um, I know that God is, is so faithful, and he always meets our needs. So, you know, it was very hot yesterday. Very hot. And you know us little Bay Arians, not all of us have air conditioning. So last night was really hard. And um, so I knew that I, before the ministry today, I knew that I had to get out in that backyard and water my flowers. I knew I had to. And so while I'm watering my flowers, I just started, it just started saying to me, you know what, Tommy? I water you guys so that you won't dry up and die. And I was thinking, wow, you know, watering i have to water the flowers at least every other two days or they will die and a couple of weeks ago when we were out of town i didn't get to water my flowers just for that day and a half and then i come back and they were all shriveled up and i thought oh my gosh so i think the lord was just saying to me he said tommy you know what jesus is the water that we all need to be able to have within us. And we get that watering through his word and through the prayer. I've been reading a lot about prayer. Prayer is greater than we can even phantom. You know, Paul mentioned in his letters that life has, is a mystery. And I think that one of the biggest mysteries is our prayer. Our prayer life is greater than we can comprehend. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be flowery. It's just praying to God and talking with him. And that's how he waters us. We, we've got to be in the, the word and we have to be in prayer so that we get that necessary living water that Jesus is talking about to help us grow and to flourish. And whenever we grow and flourish, just like today, a, a lot of us girls have flower shirts on. A flower dress. It just amazes me that we all end up with flowers today. But that's what happens. God brings beauty to us through blooming. And the way that we grow in Him is by getting that fresh water daily. Don't put it off for a day or two because if you do, then you're going to start shriveling up a little bit. And then whenever the trials come, you're not going to be ready to fight it because we want to be strong and healthy. We don't want to be all shriveled up and dried up. Because then whenever we get like that, we don't get the victory. We don't get the victory. And, and the, the saddest thing of all is that God doesn't get the glory. All of this is for the glory of God. And, and, and Trish, that is beautiful to, to, to give us the details 
of the types and shadow that the Old Testament gives to us for the New Testament. It's all a type and shadow. And it's amazing. It's just that pattern of art that God gives to us. He's got the finished picture. Even with all the black threads and the, and the colorful threads, it all runs through. And so thank you so much, Tricia. I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to uh, the next two weeks to be able, because we are coming up to Christmas. And, and we're, we're going to know a little bit more about it after this is over with. So if, if anybody needs prayer, please come and see us three or Trish or, 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 or Vivian or whoever you want to have prayer with, okay? Because like I said, the most important thing for us right now is to make sure that we're getting the necessary water that, that Jesus Christ wants us to have, okay? So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this beautiful time that we can gather together. I know I was talking to Gladys about Martha and about Mary. Sitting down at Jesus' feet, Mary did. Martha was busy. But Martha was doing what she felt she needed to have to do. But Lord, I thank you that we've taken this time out this morning to sit at Jesus' feet and to be able to worship you, Lord God. And to hear your word, Father God. Lord, as Nick always says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, I know that your word also says that when we see Israel surrounded by the enemy, to lift up our redemption draws nigh. You also say that that generation will not perish before Jesus return. So Lord, we know that you're coming back, Lord God. May you find us, Lord, with our oil full in our lantern. Yes, May we be ready for you, dear God. And Lord, we do look, we look forward to what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard for what you have in store for those that love you. So, Father, I ask that your blessing, Lord God, will continue upon our household, our children. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead us and guide us to bring us closer to you, Lord. Yes, it's a mystery about many things. Why? Why this or why that? But, Lord, we know you as Lord and Savior, and that's all we need to know. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Class dismissed. <laughs> Do you want that?